So we're going to start with the deep uh, back muscles as well as some of the neck muscles. Uh, before we get started, if you look in the captions, there's a link that you can go to to download a table that has the origins, the insertions, the functions, and a little extra details about the muscles. And it also includes this image so you can write along with me and the notes I used to make this video. So we're first going to start with the erector spinae muscles and the multifidus. These are the two main deep back muscles that you have to know. The erector spinae include the spinalis, the longissimus, and the iliocostalis. So this image right here actually highlights these three muscle groups. And so what you have to remember is your it's sort of like if you think of the names the spinalis is going to be closer to the spine so it's going to be the one that's more medial and the spinalis muscle its origin are the lumbar spinous processes and if you remember when you're looking at the vertebrae these little pins that we see popping out are the spinous processes and you can see that the spinalis muscles are attached individually to each one of these um, spinalis muscles. But if you notice as we go beyond the lumbar it starts to we don't see that attachment anymore. So the origin is the the lumbar uh, spinous processes. The insertions as you probably guess are the thoracic ones which you see up top. So as I said this right here this big one is the spinalis muscle. And the job of the spinalis is to extend the vertebral column. So if you think of when you're doing uh, a movement, specifically if you're doing extensions, so if you're extending the back but not bending it, that would be the role of the spinalis muscle. The fibers themselves are short and they're going to go, as I said, from the lumbar to the thoracic, thoracic uh, spinous processes. The next, as we go out a little bit more, is this middle one right here, and that is the longissimus. And if you look at the three, it's a bigger muscle and it's a little bit long. So just remember it's the longissimus. And the longissimus is going to start from the lumbar transverse processes. Now if we think back at our vertebrae, sort of here's the body and then we had these protrusions that would go out like this leading to the spinous process. And these protrusions off to the side, these are going to be our transverse processes. Now, if you need a recap on all the parts of the vertebrae, uh, please check that video on, uh, on the vertebrae. It'll help you out breaking down each part and their locations uh, within the, the back itself. So the longissimus muscle, it's going to go from the lumbar transverse process. So again, it's going to start from the lumbar. And it's going to make its, its way up to the thoracic spinous processes. And similar to the spinalis, this muscle, as you probably guess, is going to help with extension of the vertebral column. It's also going to help bend the column, so bend your vertebral column laterally, meaning the side-to-side -side bending. Um, it's also going to draw the ribs while drawing the ribs down. So basically, this helps in bending and rotation. It can also draw the ribs, and it could have... It, it can help also with uh, respiration, so it kind of helps your lungs a little bit. Um, and this also is going to span several levels, meaning that it's not going to be specifically just lumbar process and stop. It's going to actually affect, it make its effect all the way up the ribs. And then the last of the uh, erector spinae muscles is the iliocostalis. And the iliocostalis, if you look at the name, it's ilio is the same as iliac, and costalis are the same as the 
um, the intercostal spaces. <coughs> so, as you probably guessed, we can see that this muscle spans, so it's going to hit basically be this block right here. And that's all your origin, so it's going to be the medial area of the sacral crest. It's going to have attached to the lumbar vertebrae as well as the thoracic spines a little bit. It's going to attach to the um, iliac crest. And so these are all the, lo the, the fibers that it's going to uh, have its insertion at. Insertion at. But it's only going to make its way up one, two, three, four, five, six ribs up here. So it's only going to go up to the seventh rib. And so that's where it inserts. And much like the other three, uh, other two muscles of the rectus spinae, they're going to help in extending the vertebral column. So just think about the word erector spinae. Erect means to stand up straight. So if we're standing up straight, these muscles are helping to keep your back straight. <coughs> it's also going to help, same as the longissimus, with bending the column laterally. So this is going to work with the longissimus muscles as well as the um, spinalis muscle in extension. For the lateral rotation, it's going to be the longissimus muscles as well as the iliocostalis. And both the longissimus and the iliocostalis are going to help draw the ribs down. Now of the three, just remember we're going from in to out, so medial to lateral. So we start spinalis, longissimus, iliocostalis. Now if we look at the uh, multif multifidus muscles. So what we're going to have to do in order to look at the multifidus, we're going to have to actually cut out these muscles here. So we're going to have to do a reflection to remove these out, which we've actually done right on this side. So the multifidus is this big muscle that you see right here that's going all the way up, kind of like this. So it's a very big muscle and it lies along the spinal column. And the key thing about the multifidus is that it's going to basically go along the posterior portion of the superior iliac spine. It's going to go dorsal along the sacroiliac ligament and the mammillary process. And it's going to make its way up the spines of vertebrae two through five levels superior to the origin, meaning that it's going to make its way all the way up here. And again, as we saw with the erector spinae muscles, this muscle, much as you'd expect, is going to extend the vertebral column. Now the difference is this is going to allow rotation, so instead of having side-to-side -side bending, this is going to allow the person to go like this, basically, where we're going to rotate the body 90 degrees to the left or 90, degree, 90 degrees to the right. Um, and as I said, it runs the length of the spinal column. And it's a strong muscle that's triangular in shape. And it's a very thick muscle. So when you're doing your cadaver dissection, you're going to see that this muscle is very thick and it's under these three muscles. So it's a deeper muscle to your rectus spinae muscles. Now let's make our way to the deep neck muscles. There are three main muscles that you have to know. And so let's, let's start with the most superficial muscle. So the most superficial muscle is the uh, splenius capitis. And this muscle, the name kind of reminds me of, um, if you ever see some of these old movies or if you see like um, The Walking Dead almost where you see kind of this bandage on the side of the the guy's head or this, um, the walker's heads where it kind of goes around the skull the splenius capitis does the same thing it's kind of like this bandage that goes around the skull so, so this so it's going to go around the skull a little bit 
and it's going to look as though there's a bandage. And so the origin is going to be basically the spines of C7 of T4. And then it's going to go to the mastoid process, which is at the base of the skull. So basically stops right around here. And it's going to help extend the head and neck rotations. So it's going to allow you to turn to the right and the left. And it's going to also extend your head. As I said, this kind of is a bandage. So if you think of one of those ace bandages, this is the same idea. It's a very flat muscle. And it's going to look like a flat ace bandage going from the spine straight to the mastoid, uh, yeah, the mastoid process. The next is the semispinalis capitis, and this muscle is going to be found directly below the splenius capitis. And now the muscle is going to be going like this. So if you look at the splenius capitis, this is more superficial and directly under this muscle that we see right here, this is the um, semispinalis capitis. And the exact muscle is the same one here. It's kind of a long muscle. And so this muscle right here, what its job is, as you can tell, let's first start with where it starts. So looking at this image, its origin is the transverse process of the upper six thoracic vertebrae in C7. So it's going down to here. So basically, if we look at where it is, it's right around T4, and it's making its way up to C7. And it makes its way and attaches to the medial region between the superior and inferior nuchal lines. And what this is going to do, similar to the splenius capitis, it's going to help the splenius capitis extend the head. And it's also going to have allow for rotation towards the active side of the mu muscle side. Meaning that if we're using this splenius capitis, and this semispinalis capitis, the rotation is going to be towards this side. So if these are active and they're tensing, this head is going to go to the right, or the skull is going to go to the right. If it's on this side, it's going to go to the left. Last of the head muscles is the semispinalis cervicus, and this is the deepest muscle. And I'm trying to see if it's drawn on here. Yeah, it's right about here. So this muscle right here, it's going from the transverse process of the upper five to six thoracic vertebrae. So it's going from basically right around here and making it way, its way up to the cervical spines of the verte, uh, cervical vertebrae. So it's basically going like this. And now, similar to the erector spinae, this is going to help extend the vertebral column. It's going to work in conjunction with the semispinalis capitis, as well as the splenius capitis, to help extend the head and rotate the head. Similar to what we saw with the semispinalis capitis, whichever side ha the semispinalis cervicus is active on, meaning that muscle is contracting, that's the way it's going to rotate. So if we have the semispinalis capitis muscle, um, capitis mu muscle active along with the semispinalis cervicus muscle active on the right side, the head will rotate to the right. Same thing if we see it on the left side, these two muscles working together, it's going, the head is going to rotate to the left. And so that's basically it for your deep back muscles as well as your neck muscles.
So just keep in mind that if we're going superficial to deep, our superficial muscle is the splenius capitis, then the semispinalis capitis, and the most deep muscle is going to be your semispinalis cervicus. <coughs> Medial to lateral, for deep back muscles, we have of the erector spinae, we have the spinalis, longissimus, and iliocostalis. Deep to the erector spinae, or these three muscles, is the multifidus muscles. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please subscribe.